are shapes all around us. This video is going to be about how we can take the math that we're learning in the classroom and use it in the real world. This is geometry in real life. The perimeter is the distance around the outside of, the sh outside of a shape. So let's take this handicapped parking sign for example. To find the perimeter, we would want to find the distance to go all the way around the outside of the rectangle. So, what you can do is figure out the distance for each side and then add them all up and you'll end up with your perimeter. Okay, let's find the perimeter of this sign. We know the perimeter is the distance around the outside of the shape. So, get my tape measure out. First, we're going to find the height. It looks like it is 48 inches tall. Okay, now let's find the width. about if you see it written like this. To find the perimeter of this shape, we're going to add up all the sides. So, if we add up 136 plus 48 plus 136 plus 48 again, we get 370 inches. That would be the perimeter of this sign. We can find the perimeter of shapes that aren't rectangles or squares as well. For instance, let's take this shaded shape here. If we measure it in feet, this side is two feet long, so I wrote a two here. And this side if we measure is ten feet long. So I wrote a ten here. I also measured this side was ten and that other side was two. So, to find the perimeter, we add up all the sides. So we can add up 10 and 10 and get 20, and the two side, the smaller sides, 2 and 2 add up to 4, so we know that our perimeter is 24. All rectangles and squares have a base and they have a height. The base is the part that goes along the bottom of the shape, and the height is how tall the shape is if you look at the side of the shape. If the base and the height are the same, then the object would be a square, but if they're different, then it's a rectangle. To find the area of a rectangle or a square, we're going to use the formula that area equals base times height. Sometimes this is represented with just the first letter of each word, area equals base times height. We can use this window pane as an example to figure out the area and the perimeter. Each square within the window has a side that equals one. So, we can calculate the perimeter by calculating by counting the distance around the outside of the shape. So, we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. The perimeter of this window is 14 because there are 14 sides of the squares touching the outside of the shape. We calculate area by figuring out the base times the height. So, we can figure out how many, how much space these window panes cover by counting the number of squares inside the window pane. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We can also calculate area by using base times height. So this window has a base of three, one, two, three, and a height of four. One, two, three, four. If we multiply the base times the height, which would be 3 times 4, then we know that that equals 12, and we've already checked our work in the previous step. Since area is the amount of space something takes up, let's say that we want to find a tablecloth for this picnic table. We need to know how much space the tablecloth needs to cover, so we would find the area. Find the area by finding the height, which is four feet, and the base, which is six feet. So, to find the area of this picnic table, we're going to multiply the base times the height, because that's our formula for area. So, what is six times four? Twenty-four. 
that's the area of this picnic table. Finding the area of triangles is a little different. However, triangles still have a base and a height, so you can look at those. And you always want to make sure that there is a right angle, which is what's right here. Right angles are usually shown by drawing a little square in the bottom, because a right angle is the same angle that you find at the corner of a piece of paper. So you can think about it that way. If the corner of a piece of paper will fit in the angle, then it's a right angle. It doesn't matter which direction the triangle is facing, just as long as it always has a right angle. If you take a triangle with a right angle in it and add a couple extra lines, you'll get a rectangle. Can you see in this picture how the triangle only takes up half of the rectangle? Well, that's the same thing that we do to the equation when we're finding the area of a triangle. So we take our equation for a rectangle, which is the area equals base times height, and we add an extra half in there because it takes up half of the rectangle. So our new equation for area of a triangle is the area equals one half base times height. All right, let's find the area of this triangle that we can find in this set of bleachers. We know that this right here is our right angle, which is what we always look for when we're finding the area of a triangle. And we know it's a right angle because a piece of paper fits in the corner, just like that. So the first thing we want to find is our base. Okay, so now it's time to do the math. You can see that the height is 42 and the base is 46. And here's our right angle, just like the one behind us. So let's look at the area, area formula. And we know that area equals 1 half base times height. So now we just plug in all the numbers from our real life example. So area equals 1 half, all that's the same. Then 46 is our base, just like we learned over here. And then we need to find the height, which is 42. So we put that in there too. Then once you figure it all up and do all the multiplication, you'll find that the area of this triangle equals 966 inches. This has been Geometry in Real Life. Thanks for watching.